Hello, today I'd like to introduce the divinatory deck that's called the Grand Jeu de Mademoiselle Wintermond, uh, also known as the Astro Mythological by Mademoiselle Wintermond from France. Uh, the deck is very unusual. It's based on a 52 card deck. All of the 52 cards are present. The two additional cards are significators for whether you have a female or a male querent. And I am using two books. It's actually sort of a new deck for me, actually. Mm, it's been about a year or so that I've had it. Maybe two years. And this is the main deck or book that I got my information from. It's by Jean Didier, which may be Jean Didier, Didier <laughs> in French. Uh, and it is in French. Uh, thank goodness my minor in college was French. And it's just called Le Livre de Grand Jeu de Mademoiselle Lenormand. And the other book that I use is just called Le Tarot de Mademoiselle Lenormand. Even though it's not really a tarot, it's more of a oracle type deck. Now the way the deck is constructed is in five um, groups. The first group goes over or covers the Golden Fleece. There's only six cards in this group. The next group is the Trojan War. And there's only there's nine cards in this particular group. The next group is based on alchemy, or the, they call it the hermetic science in the book. And there are only seven cards in that group. The next group, which is the largest of all, is just called the unforeseen. So it doesn't really have a major theme. And there are 19 cards in this, the largest group. And the last is a group of 12 cards based on the Zodiac. And there is one card in here, the Nine of Hearts, that is considered part of both the Zodiac and the uh, Golden Fleece. I think that I got that right. I can double check my notes. <laughs> Yes, the Nine of... Actually, it's the Nine of Clubs. Excuse me. Sorry, I got that wrong. It's the Nine of Clubs that is part of both groups. Oh, and I don't have it. Oh, I left it in here because there's so few cards in this group. Anyway, I left it here. It's the Fighting the Hydra. Now, the way each card is constructed... There's six, well, seven major areas on each card. Let me pick one of these. It's got one, something in every section. So, at the very top left is the card, poker card that it is representing. In the middle is a constellation, and none of them are labeled, and you just kind of have to go by the book. And I do think I have all of these identified correctly. Next is a letter. Now some of the letters have a geomantic uh, designation under the letter. Neither of the books covers the geomancy. In the center of the card is the main subject. In the bottom center is a floral arrangement uh, that consists usually of three different flowers. Um, one book only points out the primary flower, and I'm not sure how they decided which one was primary. And in the other book, the Jean Didier book, it does list all three, usually. And in some cases, like in this one, it just says uh, gillyflower. There actually are two different types of gillyflower in this image. And you just kind of have to know that. <laughs> and 
Uh, in most cases, I actually have a written translation of the Jean Didier book that I'm going that I translated myself actually, and so that is what I'm using as my notes to do these videos. Now, in the bottom corners of each card is just a little uh, image or social situation or something's going on, like this bird flying up to the mountain and one perched, this, a woman seated at a writing desk, this one a woman meeting a um, gentleman, and those relate, let me move these out of the way, so a typical spread is a three card spread, I'm just going to move these as if it was a three card spread and get these guys out of the way, and the way those small images relate to each other because it's just the small pictures that relate. They don't relate to the large overall picture of the card. They relate to the smallest image that's nearest to them. So like this image relates to this. This one relates to this. And in the case of a triangular or pyramid shaped layout like this one is, this image would also relate to this one. So you'd have like a mini circle here of how the cards relate to each other. And these are read in both directions, by the way. It's not a counterclockwise or a clockwise way. It's how they're interrelated with each other. And so I just wanted to give that as an overview of these cards. Now, in the next videos, what I will do is I'm probably going to follow the book since that is the uh, translation that I have that's in English. And the way that the book is constructed is instead of the going over the meanings and the groupings, it goes through the meanings based on suit. So that is what I will be doing. Thank you for watching, and I hope you're interested in continuing my investigation into these cards.